Hey, how's it going? It's Jim. And today I am going to be looking at a new scooter for me and one of a, the first ones that I have looked at from this company, which is Dualtron, bought through Mini Motors USA in San Rafael, California. Um, and the MSRP on this is $14.99. Dualtron, you know, they're well known for having a lot of dual motor scooters. So this is a the first of the single motor scooter options. It's a little more kind of like a little bit entry into their line. I don't know if I'll put some of the unboxing I did of this, uh, but it was really interesting because as soon as you open the box and the first look at this, you can kind of see the quality of the scooter, just the way it's put together. And uh, one thing is they also, I don't know if it was intentional, but the light power light was on. So once you power it on, you know, the LED strips go and it just kind of makes for, you're like, wow, that looks cool. Um, anyway, so that was the unboxing. Um, if we come here and look at it, within the deck is, you know, the heart of the scooter, which is a 52 volt, 17 and a half amp hour battery. So that gives you 910 watt hours of high quality LG cells. So that, you know, you're getting, that's quite a lot of watt hours. And I'll talk about as we're writing my range results with this size of battery. Um, the one thing you'll really see here is the robustness of that folding mechanism. Uh, everything feels very solid and then when I fold this up I'll kind of you'll hear the click the way that clicks in how solid it feels so coming back here to the motor uh, nice branding from mini motors and one thing you'll notice on uh, uh, Dualtron scooters is they they kind of they actually rate these things properly um, so it's rated at 1450 peak uh, watts of power to the rear so most companies there'll be a nominally rated number that's more of a, the spec on the motor and so there's a lot of confusion they just give you the true peak output of the motor which i think is good because that's that's a truer number so doing the math on that with the 52 volt battery being at 58 or so when fully charged uh, that gives it, that means the controller should be putting out 25 amps uh, by that math coming back here we got this the single drum brake, uh, very simple style, but quite effective. And I'll talk about the braking results I had uh, when I'm when we're riding. But I just want to show you the brake. Simple, easy to adjust by that nut right there. If it's you just feeling like the brake braking force changing while you're riding, it's really easy to adjust. Du dual spring shocks in the rear, um, as well as in the front, and they they're they're fairly firm and as I'll talk about right as we're riding but it gives you a feel for you know how how this thing uh, it, it's more of a spark sports car feel uh, so we got eight and a half these are branded eight and a half by two inch tires these are a pneumatic tube system uh, with a separating rim so it's very easy to change flats on this and one of the claims to fame with the Mini Motors motors is they also separate and split the rim, uh, making these rear tire changes a lot easier than a lot of scooters. Um, and also one thing, other thing with Mini Motors is it allows, they have anti-lock braking in their systems. And I'll talk about how that works on this particular scooter as a riding. Fixed handlebar position. All the specs will be down in the description, but this is a, 40 inches or so from the deck up to the handlebars and the deck itself is kind of an interesting feature it's wide but short so we got 17 inches wide to here from there this is about a four inch wing and the deck width is i think i think it was seven and a half no it was seven got the hit kickstand here charge port and the light switch for the lights is right here And I'll put in, so you got the deck lighting and the stem lighting. I'll, I'll put on some video at night of the different colors, the way they change through, so you can see that a little bit better. Of course, you got brake light functionality anytime, not only when the lights are on. A nice feeling four finger lever with a cutoff here. The brakes feel quite good on this, for, especially for a single brake. 
and a little bit of a curve on the handlebars is really nice for riding a longer distance. I tilted this forward, as I'll explain later, just to help with uh, how I felt while riding it. This latch mechanism is not used, but it's kind of a default stem with the dual trons, so this maybe you use it to open a beer bottle, I don't really know. I'm gonna show how this thing folds down and folds back up, and then with that, we're gonna go ride. So there's a, a release pin right here that releases this lever. Um, it's a big enough lever, you, don't, you can just pull it, but I recommend, recommend taking a little pressure off and then pulling that lever, and, and it pops in down at the bottom position so you can carry it. I did weigh this at almost 49 pounds, um, and of course your minimum, and all the dimensions are down in the description. You can see with these wide handlebars, that's still your most obtrusive part when you have it folded. And I'll fold them back up. Folding up is just as simple, just have to release that mechanism. And this is what I think is pretty interesting. You can hear this, that pop in there, it just pops it so solidly. Um, one thing I did is when you're riding, this has a tendency to wiggle and make a little noise. So I'm gonna do that when I first take off riding, leaving it like that. But there's also a um, M3 threaded, uh, I'll check on that for sure, I'll list what this bolt is. But there's a threaded hole right here. It only goes through to the lever. Um, so I just threaded this bolt in here. And when I go for a ride, I just take a second and, and snug this up and it keeps this from making any noise. The only other real noise I've noticed on the scooter is the kickstand. You can see right there, it, it sprung all the way back and it does a little bit of that as you ride. Um, I'm gonna try to figure out a solution with some tape, but just kind of pulling it away from there until you hit a big bump does a trick, but then that does start to make a little bit of noise. With that, I kind of went through it. I'm gonna talk about the settings I have in here while we're riding, go through different speed modes, talk about the performance and wrap this thing up. So you hear that little bit of jingling. And I'm gonna do my little fix. A little tension to the side here. You could even tap this, I guess, if you really wanted to, but just a little bit of finger tension. Seems like it does a trick. Lifetime, so I've ridden this 75 miles, so I got a pretty good feel for it. Um, I have this on a, a start from a standstill. Uh, it's got a really high deck. Um, those dimensions will be down there. I think it was seven and a half inches high. So it's a little too high to really effectively kickstart for me or what I like to, so I do have it on live from a stop. So like I was saying, the, the narrow deck is probably the biggest thing that it takes getting used to. Um, and with that little wing, it depends on the way you tend to have your feet. Um, there's enough width through me with a size 10 shoe, you can kind of see how I'm oriented there. Um, but it took a little getting used to. Here I'm, I'm maxed out in limit one, about 11 miles per hour. Um, cruise control, I think just engaged. Nope, not yet. Uh, there's a very small indication you'll see there up about uh, the upper left of the numbers uh, for when the cruise control is engaged. And there it is, it flashes right up there, very hard to see. And then when you hit the brake, there's a little brake indicator. Of course, that kicks you out of the menu. So there's speed limit one. We're gonna go to dump two, and this is where I ride most of the time. It's a, it's a big, it's a big jump. All right, so now we're in speed limit two. Um, I'm kind of maxed out right here. So 20, I don't know what the GPS will say. It feels like we're pretty close to 20 miles per hour. So uh, I'll just talk briefly about my range test. So the first range test, I went a little under 20 miles in this speed limit too, but going you know, 15 to 20 miles per hour. And what I saw there was I was about 55% battery at the end of that nearly 20 miles. And with, with good efficiency, I had under 25 watt hours per mile, which is, you know, for this much of an output motor, kind of surprising. So 
That was, that was kind of nice to see. So that projects out to a, a range about 32 miles, which is close to what Mini Motors has listed. So I mean, I, from a range perspective, I don't think you would be disappointed. It, uh, you, I am pretty confident you could get 40 miles if you wanted to you know, be a little more ginger on the throttle. And I weigh 175 pounds. Uh, it, this is rated for a max weight rider of 220. I don't really understand that weight rating. I think this would easily handle a, a, a heavier rider than that. Now I'm going to jump up to speed mode three, and you kind of have to. I do anyway. I kind of have to take my finger off to change off the throttle because uh, you'll probably notice it's kind of a long reach to the to the trigger throttle. And if for a very long ride without cruise control engaged, this starts to you start to feel it. You can actually, if you're in the speed mode, you know you want to be in. Uh, one way to do this is you actually rotate this all the way to the underside of the handlebar and use your thumb, thumb on it. Kind of like a modified thumb throttle. So here I'm going to show you what your top speed up in level 3. And I'm not even 100% battery so we'll see what we're going to be at here. So to be expected, uh, I mean, you kind of hope that the Dualtron would outperform a lot of other budget scooters at this price point. Um, and it does from an acceleration standpoint. I got about 6.2 seconds it was. Um, I'll put that on the screen to 100 feet. Um, and that really outperforms any of the single motor scooters I've tested to date. Um, and it's a very... Kind of smooth feeling acceleration. It's not once the initial the initial burst is strong, but that's adjustable in the display. I, I you know you can play with that setting to see what you like, and I do like how Dualtron supplies you with all of those settings in the manual. So as far as range goes, I did one range test in the same speed mode three, trying to hit as the top speed as often as I could. And I actually, it actually took me a little over, it was over, I got over 20 miles of range. I'll put the exact number on the screen. Uh, and that calculated down to about 10% battery remaining. So a little bit further than I should have taken it, but it was a pretty impressive range for this uh, size of battery. Of course, your efficiency goes way down when you when you jump in uh, speed limitation, trying to push those speeds. All right, so here we are on uh, Bannister Hill, which is where I do all my hill climb tests, and this is a hill that is about. Uh, it's a 14% grade at the steepest point. Um, so I don't know if you can really tell from this angle. It's, it's a steep hill. And I start from a stop and I do it all the same with all these scooters. So I'll put on the, sc on the screen how this compares so I won't know until after. But I'll have a feel because I've done this enough. Um, let's, but this, let's, let's climb this hill. So you can hear there, the motor makes a little bit, uh, it kind of groans a little bit on takeoff. So we're at 70% battery or so. All right, stop. Um, now I'm, as I come down here, I'm just gonna tap the electronic braking. So I'm barely hitting the brake and letting the electronic brake engage. All right, so that was taking off in mode one. So you should be able to hear that electronic brake engage a little bit. So you can hear that motor hit now. That guy's going ridiculously fast. So 
So here's it. So you can see, I'm gonna come to a stop here so you can kind of hear. This is in mode three from a stop. You can see, you hear that, mo that, that motor's a little grunty, a little groany right at first. But then once you get past that, I mean, I feel like it's just a smooth power band up to the top speed. As I've spent more time on this scooter, you start to learn things. Uh, you know, one thing I do like is the odometer. Trip odometer does not reset unless you reset it. So when you're at trip, you hold down the circle, the mode selector button, button to zero that out. So here's a little gravel on the side of this. I'm just going to show you. I mean, for this scooter, I did some in the grass too. Like with a little bit of wider traction patch on these tires, it's really quite uh, forgiving on some light trails. Now, I, I don't know if I really said it during the hill climb. I didn't really feel like that was the best hill climb. I, I was actually expecting, hey, why are there goats over here? Goats, what are you doing? They're just random goats. Anyway, maybe that's uh, what this guy, maybe that's, maybe that's goat, goat guy. Uh, anyway, so I, I, I was a little, I, I honestly, I was a little disappointed in the hill climb. I thought we would uh, have a little better, a little better result there. So a lot of people would probably scoff a little bit at a single brake, single motor scooter. Like I said, the acceleration was the best I've seen on a single motor uh, I've tested to date, which isn't surprising. It feels spunky. Uh, the braking performance was also better than all but some of the better dual brake scooters and actually the Go Tracks, which uh, is just you know it's so, it was so slow but here i'm going to hit a little bit of the brake just here. here's the electronic brake and from this like like there is no issue at all with braking for performance to me uh like 18 feet uh, uh whatever uh, i'll put on the screen what my actual reading was from 15 miles per hour but it's pretty good um and one thing i'm going to do now is i'm going to demonstrate the ABS which is right here and my thought is the ABS must it feels better on on the disc brake scooters on the drum brake scooters uh, and you're, I should have probably done this with the uh, hopefully you can still hear it so that's just with the smallest tap on uh, I wish it engaged at a deeper and it just feels it doesn't feel good on this drum brake scooter uh, honestly uh, but what I've noticed, and I did testing with it, and I'll put that on the screen, I actually had a little poorer braking performance because it, instead of being a true ABS, it's just pulsing, and uh, I, I feel like with strong electronic braking and just some control and digging into it with your body, you get better braking performance. But here, I'll do it one more time. I'll do kind of a fast stop so you can see kind of how it works. So you can kind of hear there what it's attempting to do. And I just saw this little trail. I kind of feel like it will... That's what you call nearly ditching it. So here's just a little light trail. I just want to show real quick. Like, this is pretty bumpy. <laughs> but, you know, it's not... Yeah, this is doable on this thing. There's some folks living back here that I don't feel like really bothering at the moment. Pretty big problem in Sacramento. I don't know if it is where you are. Who am I kidding? It's a gigantic problem. The little bit of sweep back on the handlebars feels nice and relaxed. Uh, when I first got the scooter, there's a little bit of wobble in the front. And there's a nice uh, nice e-bike, a little man move action. Um, uh, what it was is the, the tube was bound up a little bit, so deflating and kind of massaging the tire and tube and then reinflating seemed to take care of that a wobble I was experiencing. But, you know, you feel the bumps a little bit more than some other scooters. And like I said, with the short deck, you have to change foot positions a lot. But 
the comfort level is quite good and the, the nimbleness. So I also always do the handlebar rotation left to right. Well, this handlebar actually rotates 360 degrees to the point it's limited by those wires. So I've ridden 16.2 miles, as you can see here. I started out at 90%, so we're down at, so we've used about, uh, would that be 35% battery uh, to go 16 miles, some high speed, some hill climb. That's pretty good, I would say. Um, so, you know, definitely, it's definitely easy to get over 30 miles with this scooter of range and still have pretty reasonable performance at that same time. I just want to get a final look on, you know, the little, the little simplicity of the Dualtron's head badge. And it's just beefy. All the bolts, everything looks really beefy and solid. I don't know if I really got that much of a look at the swing arm and, you know, the, the deck down there. And that, what I was mentioning as you're riding, and I'll show you that here, is the, the turning is not limited except when you get to the point where you start to run out of wire. So it would, it would spin 360 degrees the way this stem is designed. It's a pretty slick design. Um, and some people don't exactly like this idea that this is all labeling, but it looks like it actually might just be a sticker. So you might even be able to just pull this off and have a straight strip. Um, I don't know about that. I'll have to look at that. Um, but I do like the extra eliminate, illumination you get there. Um, a little dusty from the ride, but just to give you another look. I rode a lot of fixed gear bikes and kind of like that clean lines. I kind of like the clean lines of the single scooter without a lot of clutter up front. Pretty simple. Handlebars nice and clear. I, I think it looks pretty sharp and capable and it's a lot of fun and it really performs pretty well, especially considering uh, being a single motor. So if you have some experience with this scooter, uh, other Dualtrons, feel free to leave a comment down below. Some of this information will also be on my website, electron-surfer.com. So thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you next time. Catch the wave. Feel the wave.